So today I'm going to talk about three portrait miniatures by three of the most brilliant exponents of this art form. Nicholas Hilliard, Isaac Oliver, who was his pupil and later his rival, and Isaac Oliver's son, Peter Oliver. At this early date, portrait miniatures were known as limnings, and the people who painted them, the artists, were called limners. This word comes from the word illumination, as in illuminated manuscripts, and portrait miniatures were painted in exactly the same way. They used the same media and materials, so they're painted on parchment or vellum, and the artists use watercolour. Illuminated manuscripts were also used for official documents, and their first letters, very, very beautifully painted, often incorporated a portrait of the person for whom the document came from. So if it was a royal document, you would often have a portrait of the king or the queen incorporated into that large first letter. And their authority is really represented by their portrait in the document. So they're quite symbolically important as well. And it's actually been said that with courage and a pair of scissors, one could create the first miniature. You could emancipate the portrait from the document page. Portrait miniatures were very, very central to court life right from the very beginning. And monarchs such as Henry VIII used them to reveal and conceal loyalty. So often you would be given a portrait of the king um, as a thank you from him for your loyalty, or you could commission a portrait of the king or queen and have it set in the most magnificent gold jewel to show your loyalty to the king. Because of their size, portrait miniatures were used from the very start for both concealing and revealing loyalty. Monarchs like Henry VIII would often reward his courtiers with a portrait of himself if he'd felt they'd been particularly loyal. And in turn, they could commission a portrait of the king and have it set magnificently in a gold and jeweled frame to show their loyalty to the monarch. Because they were small, miniatures were also portable, ambassadors could take them abroad and show other monarchs portraits of the king and show him as healthy and strong. And both Henry VIII and Elizabeth I used portrait miniatures in this way. But miniatures could also easily be concealed, especially when they had a romantic or a personal purpose. You would quite often see large oil portraits, women wearing a black cord around their neck and just tucked into their bodice is likely to be a portrait miniature. This, of course, fed the gossips of the court with guessing just who was concealed inside these beautiful gold lockets which often held them. This first portrait miniature that I'm going to talk about is by Nicholas Hilliard, whose name is really synonymous with the portraits of Queen Elizabeth I. He's responsible for her public and her private image and even wrote about what it was like to paint the Queen she wanted to be painted in the open air with very, very few shadows and lines. And he continued to take that technique into portraits he painted of anybody uh, of, of the court. So this young man painted in the 1590s was likely to be a member of the court. He's wearing this wonderful pink doublet, which has got tiny slashes that you can see if you look very closely, which is a very fashionable way of um, showing perhaps some, some silk underneath or the undershirt. And it's probably made of a heavy silk or, or satin material. It's also got these shoulder pads here to, to make the sitter look more masculine and to give him a broader shoulder line. Hilliard always put in lovely naturalistic detail. And what you can see in this little collar is the very thin silk, almost transparent, that goes over a heavier cotton lawn collar. And at the very end of the collar here, a little bit of the blue background is showing through just to show how, how sheer this silk was. Although we don't know who the sitter was in this portrait, his face is very, very close to a sitter painted in another miniature by Hilliard, which mysteriously clasps a hand coming down from above. One really remarkable aspect of this miniature is just how well the pigments have survived. Usually the red pigment is the one to fade fastest. But here, the sitter's even got a flush in his cheeks that goes down to his earlobes, almost as if he's caught a glimpse of his lover, who, of course, this portrait may well have been intended for. The second miniature I'm going to talk about is by Isaac Oliver, who was the pupil of 
Nicholas Hilliard, but who had a rather more continental approach to portrait miniature painting. He was better travelled than Hilliard and really influenced by the Italian old masters that he'd seen on his, on his travels. Unlike the Nicholas Hilliard miniature, we know the sitter in this miniature was called Thomas Phones, and he was born in the West Country and eventually set up at home in Plymouth, which was a very prosperous town in the early 17th century. This miniature dates from around 1605, and eventually Thomas would become mayor of Plymouth. And what's rather lovely about this miniature is, although this is a mayor of Plymouth we're looking at, Oliver has really portrayed him as a very fashionable courtier. He's got black doublet on, which has got lovely slashes and embroidery, which incorporates some floral designs. And he's also got this lovely collar, which would have been wired in order to stay upright. And again, in a nice naturalistic touch, his beard goes over the white collar, as does his love lock, which was a very fashionable, longer piece of hair that men grew at court, but associated perhaps with, with younger, more rakish figures at the court. The final miniature I'm going to talk about is by Peter Oliver, who was the son of Isaac Oliver. And you can see that this portrait here is not a portrait at all, but in fact, it's a biblical subject. And this dates from around 1630. Isaac and Peter Oliver had access to the Royal Collection oil paintings, which included some of the Northern Italian Renaissance masters, such as Titian and Vecchio. And they were commissioned by the king and by the more intellectual connoisseur collectors to paint smaller images of these large oil paintings. So this portrait, uh, or biblical subject, painted around 1630, we believe to represent St John the Apostle, who's often shown as a, a rather androgynous figure with long hair and a face which is neither overtly female or male. These copies were in fact uh, often more expensive than the original oil paintings. And this was proved in the Commonwealth sale when paintings were sold after the execution of, of Charles I and miniatures by Isaac and Peter Oliver often sold for more than the original oil paintings. Through these three miniatures, it's possible to see how the Elizabethan tradition of painting miniatures evolved to follow changing tastes in both portraiture and subject painting and how the miniature continued to be central to the romantic, diplomatic and cultural lives of the late 16th and early 17th century.